Hello, I'm joined today by Abby Wright, who is an Alexander Technique teacher and entrepreneur who's based in London. And she's also the founder of a company called She Stands. Hi there, Abby. Hi, Andy. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, for those who don't know you or haven't come across your work, can you uh, describe a little bit about She Stands and some of the work you do? Yes, of course. So She Stands is all about understanding how gender stereotyping, which we know is set in children by the age of four, impacts how we hold ourselves. And it's specifically focused on girls and women trying to really understand this need that, that we have to apologize for taking up space and understanding when that starts to, to set in from a young age. And then on, on the back of that, it, it's raising awareness around that and then creating trainings where it's either going into workplace, uh, people's workplace and working with women there, or it's working with uh, going into secondary schools and working with teenage girls, or, uh, or mums as well. Like I've got a four-year-old and a one-year-old, so I'm, I'm really aware of the pressure being a new mum takes on us and our physicality. And, and I think that there needs to be more awareness around that, that how it impacts how we hold ourselves and, and the impact that has on, on how we feel about ourselves. So that's, that's sort of an overview of, of She Stands. That's really interesting, Abby. So what was it about this area in particular that attracted you, especially in relation to Alexander? So I think it was, I graduated from LCAT in 2015 and started teaching then. I'd already been teaching yoga and had my own business. So I, but I didn't really have a focus. And then I did actually then for just over a year work with another incredible Alexander Technique teacher, Fuen Santo, where we worked a lot with performers. And I learned lots and it was really interesting, but it still didn't, I guess it didn't really make my heart sing. And it, it was my passion. And then it was having, having my first daughter in uh, 2017. I think as many parents do, when I had her, I started to really think about what it was I wanted for her and what it was that I didn't want for her. And it really started to make me look at gender stereotyping and it really made me realize how limiting stereotypes are for us and how much it held me back in my life and how I really didn't want that for my daughters. And so I started to think about what is it that's really helped me with my confidence, with me being more grounded, more uh, allowed me to really pursue what's really important for me and stand up and, and use my voice. And it, it, of course, it's the Alexander technique. That, that's really what helped give me the confidence to do that. So that was sort of then the perfect combination was bringing what I'm passionate about, which is gender equality and changing the world that my daughters then grow up into uh, with Alexander technique. It's sort of for me, became the, the perfect uh, combination. And that's, that's, it started off actually, I called the, the company Inspiring Margot, is my daughter's name. Uh, and, then, and then as I had another daughter, I thought I'd better change that. And that's where, where She Stands came from. And it's really, it's just really close to my heart because it's, it's, what, it's what I know Alexander Technique changed my life. So I'm finding ways to, to try and get it out there to help other girls and women as well. It seems such a, a brilliant fit, such a brilliant combination. Do you know of any other Alexander teachers doing similar work? Interestingly, I, I don't, is the answer, but that's not, that. but then I haven't looked. I think I've been on such a focused uh, journey of, of, of what I've been, what I'm loving, what I'm doing and, and creating it that I haven't really reached out, but I, I would hope that there are, and I would say that if by any chance that there is someone who's watching this who is, let's, you know, we should be in touch because we've got to do it together. Whether it's Alexander Technique, whether it's something else, we're, you know, trying to create a more equal world for our children, you know, we have to do it together. So the answer is I don't know, but I, it would be wonderful if there were and if we could work together, that would be amazing. Mm. So to talk a little bit about what you do in your in your workshops and your presentations and, and talks, um, what what kind of Alexander principles do you do you mainly include? OK, so, you know, I've got to be honest, although I, I, I explain that my, my background is the Alexander technique and, and when I talk at the end, I talk about, you know, if you're looking for further 
looking to go into this a bit deeper, you know, how they can find a teacher close to them. It's, you know, I, it, I don't know if I, I don't really use Alexander Technique terms or anything like that, but it's 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 starting off talking about why it is as females that we might be making ourselves smaller physically. Why might we, we, we be doing that? What is it that we've been told when we were growing up? What is it that 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 brings that on? Who are the people that are around when we do that? Why are we doing that as a society? So it's really bringing uh, knowledge and awareness in that area, because obviously, as we know, awareness is the the first step. And then it's moving on to okay. So if we wanted to give ourselves permission to own our space, because that's what it all really comes down to, is giving ourselves permission to own our space. That's when we can think about okay. So what are some really helpful tools to do that? Um, I love doing the weight of the head and taking a pile of books. It's just every time people would love that. So a lot about the weight of the head. I like to talk, talk a lot about the space under your armpits and how we can start loving our armpits more. And then that comes into the breathing. And it's, and it's really body mapping, you know, letting them find their sitting bones, finding their hip joints, finding their feet on their floor, uh, finding their feet on the floor. So really getting to know themselves as well with, with, through the body mapping. Um, uh, but it's interesting when there's one one project that I started, which is teens teens uh, take a stand, and I started it not long before lockdown came into came into place. So we haven't actually run it in the school yet, but it was talking to schools and it's focusing on girls, um, so young women the age of thirteen to fourteen, because you find that when when young women start secondary school, they get a lot of attention when they first start, and then they get a lot of attention when it's GCSEs time. But there's this age in the middle, sort of 13, 14, where they're, they're kind of missed. They're sort of, they're not getting as much guidance potentially in, not in all schools, but in a lot of cases. So it was really, how could we speak to them? And that training, although it's got all those fun tools and things like that, it's got to be so different because obviously they're a different age to the women in the workplace. Um, but also I, there's a statistic that's come out that Dove has done in a lot, they, they do a lot of research around body image that now says that 80% of 13 year old uh, young women are distorting their image before they put it on social media. So using the airbrushing apps or the, uh, whatever it may be. So that has, to, that has to be talked about, that has to be talked about with these young women and not in, in a way to be ne talk about it negatively with them, but try and be smart about how we speak to them about how they feel about how they look and, and how that comes across on social media. And the thing is, is trying to get across it. If you feel good, you look good, as opposed to if you look good, you feel good. And it's really working on them about, actually, you know what, if you have better posture and if you own your space more, you look better. And it's trying to find ways to really help them, them understand that. So although we haven't run that course yet, unfortunately, I'm, I'm hoping that in the next year where things start to, to, to come, come back and go back to normal, we'll start doing that course. So it's, that's slightly different, but uh, it's a really long answer to your question. <laughs> um, <laughs> in terms of the working with, with the teenagers, uh, yeah. it's so interesting to, to hear your stats that you're, you're, you're mentioning there. Um, what do you think, I know you haven't run a course yet, what do you think um, their reaction would be? Do you think there'll be some resistance to- Yeah, um, well, definitely. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I think, I think the more we can run the trainings, the more we'll get savvier on how best to communicate with them. I think there'll be some young women that will really take it on board, of course, but I think there's gonna be a massive, massive pushback. I think the difficulty is I'm, I'm older and I don't, you know, I'm not really on social media that much. I don't, I don't understand what it's like for them. And I think another aspect of it, I think that I would love to do again, it's all, you know, around timings and what you have is running focus groups with these young women and, and talking to them about it. I think that, I think that would really help as well. So there's all, you know, you know, um, it's all stuff that I'm really excited to do. It's just, it's, get, it's getting in front of them is, is, is the first thing and then and then seeing what the response is. But yeah, in answer to that question, I think there'll definitely be pushback from it. So then it's becoming more creative about how you reach out to those that, that don't want to hear it, basically. Mm. What's your plan in terms of getting um, school involved, schools involved in, in your 
project. So, the, so it's it, originally I just wrote, I reached out to a couple of local secondary schools because how I want it to run is that you work with these young women, but you also work with the teachers as well. So it's, it's doing a training for the teachers where you show them that this is what I'm doing with these young women so that they can understand it and, and bring it maybe into the classroom as well, but also going through that with the teachers as well. So they understand how society around them is impacting how they might be holding themselves and that they really understand that they are a role model and how they hold themselves. It, you know, the young women will be seeing that as well. So it's, it's, it's getting everybody on board as much as possible so that once the, you know, the training is over, that there's sort of echoes of it as, as the rest of the year goes on. That's, mm -hmm. that's the plan. Right, it sounds a brilliant plan and best of luck with it. And of course, the other, the other big project you've been involved in over the last few years is your Festival of the Girl, which you, uh, you're you co-founder and co-organizer of. Can you um, explain a bit more about what that is? Yeah, of course. So um, yes, I'm very proud to be co-founder of, of Festival of the Girl. So this started in 2019. So this all goes back to the gender stereotyping. So if we understand that gender stereotyping is set in children at the age of four, and we understand the, you know, the limits that that, that puts on both boys and girls, why then are most of the initiatives that are run in secondary school, why are we waiting so long? Because by that point, when we're trying to then say to girls, oh, you know, gender stereotyping says that, that girls don't really get into STEM, you know, science, technology, um, engineering and maths. But then at the age of 14, they're gonna say, oh, actually, no, 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 you, you can do it. It's too late. We need to be engaging these girls from a much younger age. So we decided to create a festival specifically for primary school age girls age 7 to 11. It's in October because that's when International Day of the Girl is and what we want to do is break down these gender stereotypes not that we want them to know we want them to come and have fun and try something new feel good about themselves and, and go home but behind the scenes we want there to be really strong female role models and it's very activity based uh, festival so they're always up trying something new in the first one we had, they had, they were building brick walls, they were doing martial arts with lightsabers, they were doing uh, different architecture through virtual reality. They were doing vision boards with top CEOs, the British army were there doing boot camps. So, you know, trying all these different things they wouldn't normally do. And then, um, and then seeing how they feel after, after they do that and, and just showing them what, what they can do, that, that there's anything that they can do. And then last year we took it online because of everything with the pandemic. And we, it was really exciting. We, we, we'd hoped to reach about four or 500 girls and we had over 2000 girls sign up from, and there was girls from, up from all over the world who'd signed up. So we're very aware that this is really needed and there really isn't something like this that is already happening. So we are just working out how we can reach as many girls as we possibly can, it's free so that anyone can access it. Um, last year's, all the virtual content we made last year is now on YouTube, our YouTube channel. So again, anyone can access it. And what I'm especially excited about is this year, um, we decided that the theme would be all about the body. So it's called My Brilliant Body. Really come thinking about how these young girls can understand how their body moves, uh, all the amazing things they can do with their bodies as opposed to it all being about how their bodies look from an observer, you know, from an outside point of view. So uh, we're very, yeah, so it's really exciting. It's, 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 you know, it, it comes back to what I'm passionate about, which is creating a more gender equal society and showing, showing girls that, you know, what, what they can do and, and, and breaking down the, the limits that have been put into place. So yeah, it's really exciting. Yeah, sounds it. And will there be much Alexander influence in this year? Well, this yes. Year? I mean, yes. It's, Andy, I've thought about this a lot and I keep thinking, well, I should do a video for these young girls. Um, uh, but I might I might get someone else to do it. So, yes, there will be Alexander technique. Absolutely. But uh, I think I'll probably find another teacher who um, feels really confident doing something for girls of this age, making it fun and exciting on a video. Uh, so yes, that it will be there. It will be there. Fantastic. And can you <laughs> get, will it be um, online this year or are you hoping to have live? We're gonna do both. 
So I think we'll always now have it online because the reach is so much more, it makes it so much more accessible for people everywhere. And hopefully more and more schools will get involved so they can then put it in their IT room. So kids maybe who don't have computers at home can still access it. So the key is making it accessible to everyone. But we are also hoping to have a live, a small live event as well. So fingers crossed, fingers crossed we do. And can you remind us of the details of how to sign up and when it is? Yes, so it's going to be Sunday the 10th of October, so there's a bit of time, um, and if you just go to our website, which is festivalofthegirl.com, um, I will this week be putting up a sign up button, I haven't <laughs> done it yet, I've got to do that, but we all follow us on Instagram or Facebook, again just find Festival of the Girl, because that's where we put all the updates of when you can sign up, And uh, but for now just save the date, which is Sunday the 10th of October. Fantastic, what a worthwhile project. Um, before we round up, is there anything else you, yep. uh, you're involved in or anything else you'd like to cover that we haven't discussed so far? Today? Yes, please. There's one more project actually that I've started this year and it's all and it's really exciting, I think, from the Alexander Technique point of view. So this project is all about how to help young women get into politics. And um, I've partnered with a woman who has a very successful year long mentorship program within the hospitality sector which is for women. And we're basically lifting that up and bringing it into the political field, but uh, making it specifically for young women. And again, it's free, so it's accessible to women from all over the UK. Um, and it's a year long mentorship program. We're speaking to a lot of uh, female MPs and, and, and women from all over the political field to, to get involved. And we're working with the other organizations that are already doing a lot to try and create a more equal uh, parliament. And, and it's really going to fit in nicely. There's nothing like this that's already being done. But what's super exciting from the Alexander Technique point of view is that one of the main points to this uh, mentoring program and the education days that it will have will be the well-being part. Because of all the different organizations that are already out there, none of them are covering that. And it's a very it's a very difficult uh, uh, role, you know, journey to take, career to take, especially if you're a woman, but obviously incredible. Um, you know, if you're looking at how you're having to, to ask people for money all the time, if you're having to campaign and knock on doors all the time, if you're the hours that you're having to work when you're juggling that with a young family, you know, there's, and the, the abuse online, there's so much that makes it so difficult. And well-being is not really talked about in that in that field. So I'm really excited to create an amazing well-being program, and 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 Alexander Technique will will be at the heart of it. So I'm really excited. Well, it sounds again it sounds another really really interesting project, and you must be incredibly busy this year. So really appreciate you <laughs> taking some time out to uh, to spend with us today. And of many thanks again. Okay, Andy, thanks so much for having me.